Hi, welcome to the Black TV Show Podcast. I'm your host, Miriam Tomeskin. Welcome back to the podcast. Today I'm doing episode 21, which is The Younger Woman. This episode aired March 14th, 1985. We start off in the bedroom where Cliff comes in from work at 3 in the morning from delivering so many babies. And he gives the stats to Claire about how a baby is born every 9 seconds. He gives the stats that every 9 seconds a child is born. And that night, they all decided to be born at the hospital. He was like, there was babies coming left and right from all kinds of direction. He also mentions that, you know, thankfully he had Dr. Mike Newcomb to help. Cliff tells Claire that he has a new girlfriend. And she was like, oh, I'm happy for him. You know, it's been two years since Marianne has died, um, which is his old wife. And so she's happy that he has moved on and found another woman. And uh, Cliff said that that woman's going to be coming over that, that day. And so, and then all of a sudden, Claire starts thinking. And she asks, she, out of nowhere, Claire says to Cliff while he's going to the washroom, if she dies, he has permission to marry again uh, when she dies. And Cliff was like, okay, thank you. And Claire asks, uh, would, would you would you get married again after I die? Cliff was like, let's talk about it when it happens. Claire was like, that's not going to happen. You know, um, she'll be dead. Like, they can't communicate. So Cliff was like, so he doesn't really respond much to her question. So she asks, so will you stay single forever? Um, Claire asked if he would date any, like, so he said, yeah, I'll stay single forever. Claire asked, like, would you date anyone? He's like, no. And Claire was like, okay. She lays in her bed. She's like, I'm dead. Gone. And Cliff makes comments, and you're still staying in the bed with me? (laughs) I'm like, what? And then, so she was like, okay, that plan's not working. So then she was like, uh, she suggested what would happen if he ran into a supermodel. And this is when she is dead. And he was like, no, I'm not interested. And then Claire was like, What if he found a woman that can sing jazz like Lena Horne or can scat? And he was like, not my type. And so what? So he asked, what was his type? He's like, you. Claire is his type. And so Claire was like, okay, what happens if you found someone that is just like me? And he was like, and you're dead? Yeah, I'm dead. And he's like, ooh, that that would be amazing, you know. Uh, He was like, I'll call her up. You know, ask her on a date, introduce her to the children, marry her. And all of a sudden, Claire is not happy and turns off that light. Um, and would, so then she asked the question, would you keep her picture up? So Claire would keep, like, her photo would be up. And Cliff was like, if the woman looks just like you, why would I keep your picture up? And Claire was like, good night. And so it's the next morning. And of course, Cliff is sleeping in because he was up all night delivering babies. And all of a sudden, uh, music goes off. When I, f- I, you know, I haven't seen this episode in a long time. I didn't realize this. Um, it, it's all of season one. I have not really watched in, I feel like a few years, uh, just because I, I don't have the season one DVD for the Cosby Show. I have season two, three, four, five, seven, and eight. But for some reason, I don't have season six which is actually one of my favorite seasons. Um, but it's, I don't have season one, so I've never, like, like I don't really actively look for it to watch it. So it's I didn't realize it's been a while since I've seen this episode. And I, like, actually died laughing when he freaks out because he's like, where is this music coming from? Like, this is not the kind of music I would listen to. Um, it, it's, uh, you know, rock, and it's from ACDC, so it's just, like, this isn't my type. So I would actually freak out too if I heard blasting loud music like that, right? And so he like checks the alarm clock if it's the alarm clock that's going off and it's not. And he like looks around crazy. He's just freaked out. And he checks Vanessa and uh, Rudy's room and the noise is not coming there. And then he goes checks Denise's room and you see Denise and Sandra in the Denise's room. And he goes and like turns off the music and he's just like, 
he's just freaked out like he's just like i've woken up into a nightmare basically and sandra was like oh sorry did we wake you up and uh, cluffy was like if was he like just he's just still freaked out um he thought the music was gonna eat him up um while he's talking i noticed that behind him there's a poster of a woman running it says usa number 364 i kind of wish i knew who she was um, I don't know who she is. Let me know if you knew who know who that person is, because we want to highlight all the. I I want to really highlight all the black art that's around the house set, because they're the Cosby Show is very intentional on, in terms of what they're putting in their walls, and so I really want to know who that woman is. That uh, clearly she must have won like an Olympic gold medal or something like that. Um, but of course, as I said, I'm not born in that generation, so I don't know who she is. Uh, Cliff was like, you know, usually some people usually get accustomed to waking up from the smell of bacon, the smell of coffee, uh, the, the sound of birds ch chirping, or even, uh, you know, a cold, wet uh, nose of a steel lion on your feet, which that is just weird and gross. And yeah, no. And so he, he mentions like, this is the reason why a headset is created. So then that way you don't blast your music. And Denise was like, I only have one set. And Cliff was like, put your heads together. <laughs> um, and like, so have ears to ears. And Sandra says, you know, if Cliff just gave the music a chance. And Cliff, Cliff was like, what? <laughs> this is not music. This is not, you know. Um, Sandra says like, this guy is really talented. Um, and she's like, you, you need to listen. Like, uh, he mentions like the world is closed. Um, and Cliff was like, so then that means we should open up the world. Um, I feel like that really re <laughs> is relevant to 2020 and 2021, where literally the world was closed in 2020. Um, and we really all just want the world to open up. Uh, so that statement just i don't know if this is actually from the lyrics of the song i did look up about the whole this whole person that they're talking about the the cover of the vinyl um so i looked this up so cliff so i'm gonna read what i looked up online it says cliff is woken up suddenly by music blaring from denise's room he picks up the album cover and asks if this is clyde the singer they are listening to. His daughter says, yes, it's actually ACDC, High Voltage album he is holding in his hand. Cliff remarks that Clyde's tongue is hanging out, which is a true of Angus Young, whom appears on the album cover. So I, as I said in like other episodes that like they, they don't, they sometimes don't say the actual name of a artist, a movie, a TV show, or whatever it is. I'm not sure why. It might be due to rights, uh, if, if they don't have the rights to say that. Um, so then they would use a different name, but you could kind of understand what they're talking about. They, like, we, we know who they're really talking about. Um, I've seen this in other shows. I think the one that I know for sure, like, I've, I've seen is, like, on That's a Raven, where there's boys to motion, um, and I believe that's, uh, has to do with, uh, boys to men. And then I think there was like another character, uh, on her show. I forgot what her, what her name is, but I think it has to do with Moesha. I, I can't remember. I have to look that up, but they, a lot of shows do that where I guess maybe they don't have the rights to talk about a person. And so they name the person a different person. So that's why, the, we're talking about Clyde and not ACDC. Um, so Cliff goes back into his room to, I guess, to, it looks like he was applying to make the bed. And all of a sudden, Claire jumps on him. And he's like, what? He's like bl uh, blindsided, basically. <laughs> she <laughs> asked him, uh, so you won't put up my picture up? And he's like, no, I will. I'll put it in the hallway. Yeah, and then he, he she squeezes him more. No, no, then in the closet, and she squeezes she squeezes him more, and then he uh, and then he's like, okay, I'll blow it up over the bed, and Claire was like, yeah, blow it up over the bed with lights, you know, because she is the queen. It's Claire. What do you think? Claire is the queen. 
like how how does Cliff disrespect her like that even when she's dead, you know? Even though this is a whole hypothetical question and uh, situation. But yeah, we she is a queen. She is definitely it needs to be blown up on the bed. And so then Claire asks, uh, what will you do with her, her clothes? Um, and <laughs> Cliff was like, I'll wear them. And Claire was like, okay, as long as you don't let that girl wear it. Um, whoever this woman is that he would end up remarrying or ends up marrying for the second time. And then Claire asks, uh, what would the kids call this lady? And he's like, Lola. And he, she like hurts him more again. And so uh, Cliff makes a comment of her gaining weight. That is so disrespectful, especially the fact that she's on top of you to, to make that comment. No, Cliff, you are in the wrong. No, the like... You don't make that comment. That is not a funny comment. And yeah, go ahead, Claire. Kill him, you know? <laughs> um, not literally, but you know what I mean? And so uh, we are in, we're now at, in the living room, and we see uh, Theo putting Vanessa in, like, uh, I think they call it a full Nelson uh, headlock. And uh, they're fighting, and, like, at one point, Rudy's asking Vanessa to say, help her with a word on her book, and she actually... It says the word, and I'm like, "Damn, girl, you're you're in like in the middle of a fight, and you can read a word for Rudy. That's crazy." So what happened was, Vanessa put shaving cream in the shoe, but she's not claiming that she did it. She's she's denying it. Um, and so then Cliff so a Cliff asked about it, and then Cliff asked her directly, and she was like, uh, "Yeah, I did it." <laughs> and so he's like, "Okay, yeah, well then kill her. You know, it's just easier, you know." And he ends up tickling her and then telling her that she needs to go clean up his shoes. And so Theo was like, "Yeah, I'm going to. You better clean that shoes up." And so uh, the doorbell rings and we meet Doctor Mike and Nikki, and we find out this girl is very young. Uh, we don't know what her actual age is. They never actually say in the episode. They they just say that like she's near Sandra's age. Sandra is, I believe, twenty in this season. So, or, like, I don't know if we're if we're saying that Nikki's also twenty. I'm not sure. And so, uh, Doctor Mike uh, talks about work. You know how they've been working together and all that. And Cliff was like, I just gotta go into the kitchen. So she, Cliff goes in and tells Claire, you know. Uh, you know, this woman, she's something, you know, and Claire asks, like, what is she like? And, <laughs> and he's like, you know, she has two arms and two legs. And so Claire takes a peek at the living room. And he, she's like, where is she? Um, and Cliff was like, oh, did she like leave? Like he wasn't sure. So he actually checked himself. She's sitting beside him. And she, Claire was like, excuse me, she is someone's child. And Cliff was like, we're all someone's child. And Claire was like, well, she looks young. Like, she's just not a woman. Um, she looks like, like a child, basically. And they go into the living room, and Cliff tells Claire that she has to behave. And we end Act 1 right there, and we go into Act 2 where they're all... So Claire, Cliff, uh, Dr. Mike, and Nikki, they're all sitting and talking. And Dr. Mike talks about, you know, how Cliff was his favorite uh, resident intern. And Dr. Mike and Nikki met actually at NYU Extended. So this must be courses that you can take that are not like you need it for a degree. Um, so she was there to take uh, study about Shakespeare and he was there to learn about cooking. And that's where they met. And uh, all of a sudden we hear loud music again. It's, it's Clyde. And um, Cliff yells out and says, put the music down, you know, don't like, and Cliff was like, yeah, we'll put it down. And Dr. Mike and Nikki was like, Clyde is good. We actually went to a concert. And Cliff was like, you're, you're not serious. Like, this is a joke. And he's like, no, we actually went. Um, and Cliff makes an ex expression uh, or impression, sorry, of Clyde uh, singing, like yelling, ah, da, 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 da. You know, sorry, that's my bad sing. My you always gotta get bad, some of my bad singing, um, and so he makes that an impression of who Clyde is, and Doctor Mike gets. So they talk about you know, uh, you just gotta listen to the lyrics. Like the lyrics are very good, and like 
Dr. Mike does say some of the lyrics. I didn't actually copy it down. I was just like, I'm good. But it, well, the way he said it, though, it's like so calming. The way he said, like, it could be a poem. It could have been, you know, a nice R and B song. But Cliff is saying that like it just sounds horribly the way they do it in rock, where it seems like they're yelling the words like "No Tomorrow." And so then Dr. Mike uh, tells us that, you know, he gets Nikki to listen to Mike, um, Miles Davis since Nikki got him listening to Clyde. And uh, so Cliff is like, oh, that's good. That's, you know, Miles Davis. Uh, and it's so weird that they actually use his real, the, the real uh, artist name because he's a, the, Miles Davis is an actual person. And Nikki mentions that she doesn't really like the old, his older work but he does she does like his recent work he ju she just wishes that he sings more i'm not sure i don't really listen to miles davis so i don't know i know he plays instruments so i don't know if that's what they're referring to that because he doesn't sing he just plays instruments i'm not sure um and then dr mike uh was like we gotta go we have a game in 15 minutes um, and he gets Nikki to go start the car, and Dr. Mike talks to Claire and Cliff, saying, I apologize for not telling you how young she was, but I just wanted you to see her, her as a person instead of her age, basically. And I get that. That that makes sense, because uh, we do judge people based on their looks, and that's not great. We want to, you got to judge a person by their character. And so I understand um, his method right there. And then uh, Claire and Cliff, they start, uh, and Claire asks uh, uh, Cliff, how old, do you, how old is Dr. Mike? He's 53. And Cliff, and then she asks Cliff again, uh, how old do you think uh, Nikki is? And he's like, under 53. And I was like, of course she's under 53. Like, that is common sense right there. And so Claire mentions, like, she was surprised with Nikki. She thought, uh, she was thinking she was looking for all the bad qualities in her and she was wrong and that she they they talk about this while they're walking into the kitchen and Sandra's there i guess getting a yogurt and Sandra was like oh what what are you guys talking about and so they explain what happened uh to her and to Sandra and Sandra was like oh that's nice that's a like i'm happy for him that he found someone and the cliff was like so if this happened to you if you found someone his age would you date him and she's like yeah you know, age doesn't matter. It's, you know, if you love someone, you love someone. And so then all of a sudden, Cliff asks a hypothetical question. He, this whole episode is all about hypothetical questions. I don't know why. So he, this one is the same with similar to Cla Claire's. If he dies and Claire comes home with a 19-year-old boyfriend, uh, like, and so, so that's what he says. And then she, uh, Sandra was like, she says, yeah. And Cliff was like, what? The way you just responded, I thought you were going to say, like, you were going to mourn and be like, oh, I'm going to miss my dad. And Sandra was like, but this is a hypothetical question. Why am I mourning right now? <laughs> I love that. I love her response. Yes, girl. <laughs> um, and so uh, Denise joins and uh, Cliff says the same thing to her. What have, you know, I'm asking you a hypothetical question. What happens if I die? And she was like, yeah, <laughs> like she was waiting. It sounded like the way she said it, it was like it sounded like she was waiting for something more. And Cliff was like, you you guys don't have any sympathy for me. Like you just like I'm dead and you you don't you just say, yeah, like I love that. Um, and uh, so like Claire was like, what is your point? And uh, he's like, I don't know what my point is. <laughs> so it's just like we just don't know what the actual point of this whole conversation conversation is and so um claire was like so if i had a 19 year old boy uh boyfriend would i would they be able to live in this house and cliff's like yeah but i would be a ghost in the room and so then theo comes in and of course cliff asks the same question uh if i die uh like what would you do basically and stuff like that and Theo was like he gave gives a different answer and he's like I would be you know sad about it I I like he he actually is like in a way in mourning for him and Cliff is so happy he's like my son you know 
And he says, uh, Theo's gonna get a car tomorrow. And the girls were like, that's not fair. And so then we get to the evening and Claire is uh, working, I guess. And Cliff was like, oh, hear the sound of like, your ki like our kids playing at, her, at Claire's parents' house. It is just quiet. And Claire starts talking about like, it must be interesting to have a relationship just like Dr. Mike's and Nikki. Like there's always so much you could talk about, so many things, uh, different topics to talk about, like, because all they like all Cliff and Claire talks about are bills, report cards, work. You know, sometimes she's out of words, like and Cl Cliff was like, Well, I I want you to be happy and don't worry and all that stuff. And so he takes her to the couch. And he plays a record, and of course the record is in a sentimental mood, which is my theme song for this podcast. And the only reason why I put it as my theme song for this podcast, because of this series, is the, uh, my first time hearing of this song by Duke Ellington. And so uh, he goes into the kitchen, and he grabs a, a bowl of fruit, it was like apples and bananas, and he cuts up an apple. Uh, it's it's not like a small slice so that you can eat it for by yourself. So um, Claire takes you know a little chunk with her mouth, and then gives the whole the rest of the whole thing into Cliff's mouth. And his face and jaw is like, um, like I, it's hard to explain over a podcast. But it's just like his cheeks are way bigger. It's it's expanded because of that, and. Um, and then they all they lie down on the couch. You know, you can see that they're in love. Um, and the episode ends right there. And, of course, uh, Sabrina is back on this episode as Sandra. Um, I think this is now the third episode she's been in for this season. And I believe she comes in for what, one more episode. I guess the lesson for this episode is age is nothing but a number. <laughs> um, sadly, I'm quoting R. Kelly, which is not good. Uh, but that seems like what the series is talking about. Um, I don't like that's what I'm getting from this lesson. Let me know what you learned from this episode. Um, but my question is, would you date someone that is, uh, 20 years younger than you or 10, 20 years older, depending on what age you are at? Let me know using the hashtag younger woman, um, for, I guess for men would be 20 years younger for women. Uh, if, I guess for men and women, it would be 20. If you're older age, let me know if you're a younger age, you know, in your early twenties, let me know if you date someone that's 20 or 30 years older than you. Um, there, I've see, I feel like I watched a show called 90 Day Fiance, and you see a lot of cases like that where the age gap is 20 to 30 years difference. And it's just like you watch this show and you're like, are they really in love? Like you always question that. So let me know if you, like, if you would or if you've been. Use the hashtag younger woman. Uh, at Black TV Shows Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, if you are listening on Apple Podcasts, make sure to give me a five star rating um, and uh, give put uh, actual you know make uh, put a review uh, there so then that way more people can find this podcast. Um, I'm glad that th if you've been sticking through uh, 21 episodes, I'm happy you're still going through with me. Um, we're almost done season one and we're going to be slowly starting season two. So I'm excited. Uh, and season two is actually um, the first DVD pack that I ever got uh, when DVDs were cool back in the day. So uh, I will thank you for listening and I'll talk to you on the next one.